I want to test something absolutely crazy, which probably no other YouTuber is doing at the moment. I want to test out DaVinci Resolve on the iPad mini. Now this might seem like a crazy test because I know the iPad version of DaVinci Resolve was made specifically for the 13 inch M1 and M2 iPads and I was already using it on the 11 inch, so already not the ideal workstation. But those are using M class chips, right? Those are desktop class chips they have in those iPads. This is using an A series chip. So. Now that we have it on the iPad mini, I'm gonna boot this up and see if we can actually get DaVinci Resolve to work on the iPad mini. And if it does work, how bad <laughs> is the experience? I'm actually very curious. So we have it opened up here and right off the bat, we're getting a notification saying, hey, this is the iPad version of DaVinci Resolve. There are a lot of features, but if you want the best one, you're going to have to use an iPad Pro M1 or newer and you will have some restrictions, okay restricted to HD and some of the effects and processing tools are disabled. So right off the bat, can't even edit 4K footage on the iPad mini, which is a bit of a bummer. Let's import some stuff anyway and see how far we can push this iPad mini. So I'm gonna go here. I'm going to import my entire video and audio and open those in the media. Change project frame rate. We're gonna don't change. Okay, right off the bat, you well. We're gonna just set this up as I would, and we really are limited to 1080. I'm gonna try and manually type in custom. Oh, okay, custom, let's see. All right, all right, let's see. Image scaling, we're gonna go center crop, no resizing on both. Color management, we are going to go Rec 709A. There we go. And we are going to scroll all the way up to same as timeline, cool. And yeah, we're gonna set this as the default presets and see you can't change, yes, change project for, okay, it will not, it will not allow me to do 4K at all. That's just not an option. So we are limited to 1080, but I can import 4K footage. Let's see how that works. So I'm just gonna drag that onto the timeline and it, uh, can we, can we play it? Um, okay. It's, it's playing. I'm scrubbing through the timeline here. Uh, again, I can't scale this window here at all, which is a little bit annoying, but I'm going to pause this. Oh, we seem to uh, be frozen here. And, okay, all right, well, iPad mini, frozen while playing. Nothing is touch responding, so not, not the best first impression on the iPad mini. We're just gonna exit out of this and then go back in and it crashed. Okay, we're gonna open it up once again. Settings, we're just gonna go, okay, so it saved our settings. I'm gonna bring this back down here and I'm gonna go to the color tab and see if I can actually do anything. I'm going to go to gallery. I'm going to go to power grades. Can I hold import? There we go. I'm gonna go to my color grading tool and I'm gonna hit open, apply this grade. Uh-huh, okay, I need to import the LUT, so I'm going to go to Files on my iPad, bring this, and we're going to copy, and we're going to bring this onto DaVinci Resolve, and we are going to import this onto it, and it just did, so we're going to go back to DaVinci Resolve, and we're gonna hold here, and we're gonna hit Refresh, and now it's there, okay. So if we go to our gallery and we go to our power grades, now we should hit apply grade and it should, in theory, work. And it does, we do have a, a color grade now. And it is definitely choppier than on the M2 iPad Pro. It is barely usable. Okay, all right, well, hold, it won't stop. Okay, we stopped it. It was not glitching out as bad as the first time. Again, these touch controls definitely not meant for something this small. It is definitely not a great user experience on the iPad mini, but let's um, just delete some of these nodes. So we've deleted that. Is it smoother? It plays back. Yeah, it plays back. It's not, it's not horrible. Again, if you have a light color grade, just like a Rec. 709 LUT and some very nice exposure, changes, it's not that big of a, a leap for this. So I'm just gonna hit pause here. It does suck that it is limited to 1080. I cannot go to 4K, because it just cannot handle that. 
Again, I hope in the future that the timeline can be 4K, but the viewing window can be dumbed down to 720 or 1080 in order to preserve performance. So on the iPad, is it viable if you're working with 1080p footage? Yeah, it's viable. You can work with it. If you're working with 4K footage for a 4K export, no, it's not viable at all. But I didn't expect to be. This is not a desktop class chip, and it's performing pretty well. Definitely some glitches here and whatnot. Definitely some crashes. But everything works on the little iPad mini. And now more than ever, I want a iPad mini pro that has a 120 hertz display, a retina display, and an M1 chip or better inside of it. I know that might sound crazy, but imagine the perfect iPad mini. Anyway, that's a different conversation for a different video. But those are my initial impressions on DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. I want to know what you guys think. Do you think this is the future of video editing? Do you think it's exactly what you expected? Or do you think it's more supplemental? Or do you think it still has a way to go? I think it's more on the supplemental slash it still has a way to go before it becomes super, super viable. But I'm very excited to see how this progresses in the future. DaVinci Resolve, you're doing great. Proud of the work you're doing. Love to see future updates get even better. So my name has been Mark Steiner, and I'll see you next time.